In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, one day. Then God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were below the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse, and it was so. God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning, a second day. Then God said, Let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees on the earth bearing fruit according to their kind with seed in them, and it was so. The earth produced vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them, according to their kind, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, a third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and they shall serve as signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And they shall serve as lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, and it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, and the lesser light to govern the night, he made the stars also. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth. And to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters teem with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth in the open expanse of the heavens. And God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarmed, according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, a fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth produce living creatures according to their kind, livestock and crawling things and animals of the earth according to their kind, and it was so. God made the animals of the earth according to their kind, and the livestock according to their kind, and everything that crawls on the ground according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the earth, and over every crawling thing that crawls on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed, it shall be food for you. And to every animal of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that moves on the earth which has life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. 
And so the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their heavenly lights. By the seventh day God completed his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because on it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made earth and heaven. Now no shrub of the field was yet on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprouted, for the Lord God had not sent rain upon the earth, and there was no man to cultivate the ground. But a mist used to rise from the earth and water the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living person. The Lord God planted a garden toward the east, in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God caused every tree to grow that is pleasing to the sight and good for food, the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is Pishon, it flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good, the delium and the onyx stone are there as well. The name of the second river is Gin, it flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, it flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and tend it. 16 The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may freely eat, 17 But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for on the day that you eat from it you will certainly die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone, I will make him a helper suitable for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the sky, and brought them to the man to see what he would call them, and whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock, and to the birds of the sky, and to every animal of the field, but for Adam there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept, then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man, and brought her to the man. Then the man said, At last this is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called, Woman, because she was taken out of man. For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother, and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, but they were not ashamed. Now the serpent was more cunning than any animal of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God really said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? To the woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat from it or touch it, or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. For God knows that on the day you eat from it your eyes will be opened, and you will become like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took some of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves waist coverings. Now they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. 
Then the Lord God called to the man, and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me some of the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you more than all the livestock, and more than any animal of the field, on your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will make enemies of you and the woman, and of your offspring and her descendant, he shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth, in pain you shall deliver children, yet your desire will be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it, cursed is the ground because of you, with hard labor you shall eat from it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, yet you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, until you return to the ground, because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Now the man named his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all the living. And the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now, he might reach out with his hand, and take fruit also from the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden, to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So he drove the man out, and at the east of the garden of Eden he stationed the cherubim and the flaming sword which turned every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. Now the man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain, and she said, I have obtained a male child with the help of the Lord. And again, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a cultivator of the ground. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the ground. Abel, on his part also brought an offering, from the firstborn of his flock and from their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain became very angry and his face was gloomy. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why is your face gloomy? If you do well, will your face not be cheerful? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain talked to his brother Abel, and it happened that when they were in the field Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Then he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed from the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you, you will be a wanderer and a drifter on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is too great to endure. Behold, you have driven me this day from the face of the ground, and I will be hidden from your face, and I will be a wanderer and a drifter on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. So the Lord said to him, Therefore whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him seven times as much. 
And the Lord placed a mark on Cain, so that no one finding him would kill him. Then Cain left the presence of the Lord, and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain had relations with his wife and she conceived, and gave birth to Enoch, and Cain built a city, and named the city Enoch, after the name of his son. Now to Enoch was born Irad, and Irad fathered Mehugel, and Mehugel fathered Methushel, and Methushel fathered Lamech. Lamech took two wives for himself, the name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other, Zillah. Ada gave birth to Jabal, he was the father of those who live in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal, he was the father of all those who play the lyre and flute. As for Zillah, she also gave birth to Tubal Cain, the forger of all implements of bronze and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, listen to my voice, you wives of Lamech, pay attention to my words, for I have killed a man for wounding me, and a boy for striking me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech seventy-seven times. Adam had relations with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son, and named him Seth, for, she said, God has appointed me another child in place of Abel, because Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then people began to call upon the name of the Lord. This is the book of the generations of Adam. On the day when God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female, and he blessed them and named them mankind on the day when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeness, according to his image, and named him Seth. Then the days of Adam after he fathered Seth were 800 years, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Now Seth lived 105 years, and fathered Enosh. Then Seth lived 807 years after he fathered Enosh, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. Now Enosh lived 90 years, and fathered Kenan. Then Enosh lived 815 years after he fathered Kenan, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh were 905 years, and he died. Now Kenan lived 70 years, and fathered Mahalalel. Then Kenan lived 840 years after he fathered Mahalalel, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all the days of Kenan were 910 years, and he died. Now Mahalalel lived 65 years, and fathered Jared. Then Mahalalel lived 830 years after he fathered Jared, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years, and he died. Now Jared lived 162 years, and fathered Enoch. Then Jared lived 800 years after he fathered Enoch, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. Now Enoch lived 65 years, and fathered Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years after he fathered Methuselah, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now Methuselah lived 187 years, and fathered Lamech. Then Methuselah lived 782 years after he fathered Lamech, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Now Lamech lived 182 years, 
and fathered a son. And he named him Noah, saying, This one will give us comfort from our work and from the hard labor of our hands caused by the ground which the Lord has cursed. Then Lamech lived five hundred and ninety-five years after he fathered Noah, and he fathered other sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech were seven hundred and seventy-seven years, and he died. Now after Noah was five hundred years old, Noah fathered Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now it came about, when mankind began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not remain with man forever, because he is also flesh, nevertheless his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of mankind, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of mankind was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. So the Lord was sorry that he had made mankind on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. 7 Then the Lord said, I will wipe out mankind whom I have created from the face of the land, mankind, and animals as well, and crawling things, and the birds of the sky. For I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah fathered three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for humanity had corrupted its way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, The end of humanity has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of people, and behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood, you shall make the ark with compartments, and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you shall make it, the length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, its width fifty cubits, and its height thirty cubits. You shall make a window for the ark, and finish it to a cubit from the top, and put the door of the ark on the side, you shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. Now behold, I myself am bringing the flood of water upon the earth, to destroy all flesh in which there is the breath of life, from under heaven, everything that is on the earth shall perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall enter the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark, to keep them alive with you, they shall be male and female. Of the birds according to their kind, and of the animals according to their kind, of every crawling thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. As for you, take for yourself some of every food that is edible, and gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and them. So Noah did these things, according to everything that God had commanded him, so he did. Then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven pairs of every clean animal, a male and his female, and two of the animals that are not clean, a male and his female. Also of the birds of the sky, seven pairs, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For after seven more days, I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, 
and I will wipe out from the face of the land every living thing that I have made. So Noah acted in accordance with everything that the Lord had commanded him. Now Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of water came upon the earth. Then Noah and his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives with him entered the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and animals that are not clean and birds and everything that crawls on the ground. They all went into the ark to Noah by twos, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. Now it came about after the seven days, that the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst open, and the floodgates of the sky were opened. The rain fell upon the earth for forty days and forty nights. On this very same day Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them, entered the ark. They and every animal according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kind, and every crawling thing that crawls on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, all sorts of birds. So they went into the ark to Noah, by twos of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. Those that entered, male and female of all flesh, entered as God had commanded him, and the Lord closed the door behind him. Then the flood came upon the earth for forty days, and the water increased and lifted up the ark, so that it rose above the earth. The water prevailed and increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. And the water prevailed more and more upon the earth, so that all the high mountains everywhere under the heavens were covered. The water prevailed fifteen cubits higher, and the mountains were covered. So all creatures that moved on the earth perished, birds, livestock, animals, and every swarming thing that swarms upon the earth, and all mankind. Of all that was on the dry land, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the Spirit of life, died. So he wiped out every living thing that was upon the face of the land, from mankind to animals, to crawling things, and the birds of the sky, and they were wiped out from the earth, and only Noah was left, together with those that were with him in the ark. The water prevailed upon the earth for one hundred and fifty days. But God remembered Noah and all the animals and all the livestock that were with him in the ark, and God caused a wind to pass over the earth, and the water subsided. Also the fountains of the deep and the floodgates of the sky were closed, and the rain from the sky was restrained. And the water receded steadily from the earth, and at the end of one hundred and fifty days the water decreased. For then in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. And the water decreased steadily until the tenth month, in the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains became visible. Then it came about at the end of forty days, that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent out a raven, and it flew here and there until the water was dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove, to see if the water was low on the surface of the land. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of its foot, so it returned to him in the ark, for the water was on the surface of all the earth. Then he put out his hand and took it, and brought it into the ark to himself. So he waited another seven days longer, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came to him in the evening, and behold, in its beak was a fresh olive leaf. So Noah knew that the water was low on the earth. Then he waited another seven days longer, and sent out the dove, but it did not return to him again. Now it came about in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, on the first of the month, that the water was dried up from the earth. 
Then Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the surface of the ground had dried up. And in the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and animals and every crawling thing that crawls on the earth, that they may breed abundantly on the earth, and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every animal, every crawling thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth, went out by their families from the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took some of every kind of clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. The Lord smelled the soothing aroma, and the Lord said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man, for the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth, and I will never again destroy every living thing, as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Then God blessed Noah and his sons, and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth. The fear of you and the terror of you will be on every animal of the earth and on every bird of the sky, on everything that crawls on the ground, and on all the fish of the sea. They are handed over to you. Every moving thing that is alive shall be food for you, I have given everything to you, as I gave the green plant. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. I certainly will require your lifeblood, from every animal I will require it. And from every person, from every man as his brother I will require the life of a person. Whoever sheds human blood, by man his blood shall be shed, for in the image of God he made mankind. As for you, be fruitful and multiply, populate the earth abundantly and multiply in it. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, Now behold, I myself am establishing my covenant with you, and with your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every animal of the earth with you, of all that comes out of the ark, every animal of the earth. I establish my covenant with you, and all flesh shall never again be eliminated by the waters of a flood, nor shall there again be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall serve as a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. It shall come about, when I make a cloud appear over the earth, that the rainbow will be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and never again shall the water become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the rainbow is in the cloud, then I will look at it, to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Now the sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. Then Noah began farming and planted a vineyard. He drank some of the wine and became drunk, and uncovered himself inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it on both their shoulders and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were turned away, 
so that they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine, he knew what his youngest son had done to him. So he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants he shall be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he live in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. Noah lived three hundred and fifty years after the flood. So all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. Now these are the records of the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. The sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Tagarma. The sons of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. From these the people of the coastlands of the nations were separated into their lands, every one according to his language, according to their families, into their nations. The sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Seba, Havila, Sabta, Rama, and Saptika, and the sons of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Now Cush fathered Nimrod, he became a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, therefore it is said, like Nimrod a mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna, in the land of Shinar. Eleven from that land he went to Assyria, and built Nineveh, Rehobothiar, Kala. And Rezin between Nineveh and Kala, that is the great city. Mizraim fathered Ludim, Anamim, Lehabim, Naphtahim. Pethrusim, Kasluim, from whom came the Philistines, and Kaphtarim. Canaan fathered Sidon, his firstborn, and Hate. The Jebusite, the Amorite, the Girgashite. The Hivite, the Archite, the Sinite. The Arvidite, the Zemorite, and the Hamathite, and afterward the families of the Canaanite were spread abroad. The territory of the Canaanite extended from Sidon going toward Gerar, as far as Gaza, and going toward Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, according to their families, according to their languages, by their lands, and by their nations. Also to Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, and the older brother of Japheth, children were born. The sons of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Arpatshad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram were Uzi, Hul, Gether, and Mash. Arpatshad fathered Shelah, and Shelah fathered Eber. Two sons were born to Eber, the name of the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan fathered Almadad, Shalef, Hazarmaveth, Jera. Hadaram, Yuzel, Dykla. Obal, Abimael, Sheba. Ophir, Havila, and Jobab, all of these were the sons of Joktan. Now their settlement extended from Mesha going toward Sephar, the hill country of the east. These are the sons of Shem, according to their families, according to their languages, by their lands, and according to their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, according to their descendants, by their nations, and out of these the nations were separated on the earth after the flood. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone, and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, 
with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves, otherwise we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. 9 That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the account of Shem's family line. Two years after the flood, when Shem was one hundred years old, he became the father of Arphaxad. And after he became the father of Arphaxad, Shem lived five hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad had lived thirty-five years, he became the father of Shelah. And after he became the father of Shelah, Arphaxad lived four hundred and three years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived thirty years, he became the father of Eber. And after he became the father of Eber, Shelah lived four hundred and three years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived thirty-four years, he became the father of Peleg. And after he became the father of Peleg, Eber lived four hundred and thirty years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived thirty years, he became the father of Ru. And after he became the father of Ru, Peleg lived two hundred and nine years and had other sons and daughters. When Ru had lived thirty-two years, he became the father of Sarek. And after he became the father of Sarek, Ru lived two hundred and seven years and had other sons and daughters. When Sarek had lived thirty years, he became the father of Nahar. And after he became the father of Nahar, Sarag lived two hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahar had lived twenty-nine years, he became the father of Terah. And after he became the father of Terah, Nahar lived one hundred and nineteen years and had other sons and daughters. After Terah had lived seventy years, he became the father of Abram, Nahar, and Haran. This is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahar, and Haran. And Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, in the land of his birth. Abram and Nahar both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahar's wife was Milcah, she was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot's son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived two hundred and five years, and he died in Haran. Now all the earth used the same language and the same words. And it came about, as they journeyed east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. Then they said to one another, Come, let's make bricks and fire them thoroughly. And they used brick for stone, and they used tar for mortar. And they said, Come, let's build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top will reach into heaven, and let's make a name for ourselves, otherwise we will be scattered abroad over the face of all the earth. Now the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have the same language. And this is what they have started to do, and now nothing which they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they will not understand one another's speech. 
So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore it was named Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. These are the records of the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old when he fathered Arpachshad, two years after the flood. And Shem lived five hundred years after he fathered Arpachshad, and he fathered other sons and daughters. Arpachshad lived thirty-five years, and fathered Shelah. And Arpachshad lived four hundred and three years after he fathered Shelah, and he fathered other sons and daughters. Shelah lived thirty years, and fathered Eber. And Shelah lived four hundred and three years after he fathered Eber, and he fathered other sons and daughters. Eber lived thirty-four years, and fathered Peleg. And Eber lived four hundred and thirty years after he fathered Peleg, and he fathered other sons and daughters. Peleg lived thirty years, and fathered Ru. And Peleg lived two hundred and nine years after he fathered Ru, and he fathered other sons and daughters. Ru lived thirty-two years, and fathered Sarek. And Ru lived two hundred and seven years after he fathered Sarek, and he fathered other sons and daughters. Sarek lived thirty years, and fathered Nahar. And Sarek lived two hundred years after he fathered Nahar, and he fathered other sons and daughters. Nahar lived twenty-nine years, and fathered Terah. And Nahar lived one hundred and nineteen years after he fathered Terah, and he fathered other sons and daughters. Terah lived seventy years, and fathered Abram, Nahar, and Haran. Now these are the records of the generations of Terah. Terah fathered Abram, Nahar, and Haran, and Haran fathered Lot. Haran died during the lifetime of his father Terah in the land of his birth, in Ur of the Chaldeans. Abram and Nahar took wives for themselves. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahar's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and Iscah. Sarai was unable to conceive, she did not have a child. Now Terah took his son Abram, and Lot the son of Haran, his grandson, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they departed together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan, and they went as far as Haran and settled there. The days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, and from your relatives and from your father's house, to the land which I will show you. And I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram went away as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot, and all their possessions which they had accumulated, and the people which they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, so they came to the land of Canaan. 6. Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem, to the Oak of Moor. Now the Canaanites were in the land at that time. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Then he proceeded from there to the mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east, and there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Then Abram journeyed on, continuing toward the Negev. Now there was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a time, because the famine was severe in the land. It came about, when he was approaching Egypt, 
that he said to his wife Sarai, See now, I know that you are a beautiful woman. And when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say that you are my sister so that it may go well for me because of you, and that I may live on account of you. Now it came about, when Abram entered Egypt, that the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. Pharaoh's officials saw her and praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Therefore he treated Abram well for her sake, and he gave him sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male servants and female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord struck Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. 18 Then Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say, She is my sister, so that I took her for myself as a wife? Now then, here is your wife, take her and go. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they escorted him away, with his wife and all that belonged to him. So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev, he and his wife and all that belonged to him, and lot with him. Now Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. And he went on his journeys from the Negev as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai. To the place of the altar which he had made there previously, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks, herds, and tents. And the land could not support both of them while living together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to remain together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. Now the Canaanites and the Perizzites were living in the land at that time. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me, nor between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are relatives. Is the entire land not before you? Please separate from me, if you choose the left, then I will go to the right, or if you choose the right, then I will go to the left. Lot raised his eyes and saw all the vicinity of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, this was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt going toward Zor. So Lot chose for himself all the vicinity of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. So they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled in the cities of the vicinity of the Jordan, and moved his tents as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Now raise your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward, and eastward and westward. For all the land which you see I will give to you and to your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as plentiful as the dust of the earth, so that if anyone can count the dust of the earth, then your descendants could also be counted. Arise, walk about in the land through its length and width, for I will give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and came and lived by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and there he built an altar to the Lord. And it came about in the days of Amraphel king of Shinar, Ariok king of Elasa, Kedarlamer king of Elam, and Tidal king of Goyim, that they made war with Bera king of Sodom, and with Bershah king of Gomorrah, Shernab king of Adma, and Shemeber king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is, Zor. All these kings came as allies to the valley of Siddim, that is, the Salt Sea. For twelve years they had served Kedarlamer, but in the thirteenth year they rebelled. And in the fourteenth year Kedarlamer and the kings who were with him came and defeated the Rephaim in Ashtaroth Karnaim, and the Zuzim in Ham, 
and the Emim in Shave Kiriathame. And the Horites on their Mount Seir, as far as El Paran, which is by the wilderness. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, that is, Kadesh, and conquered all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites, who lived in Hazazan Tamar. And the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is, Zor, came out, and they lined up for battle against them in the valley of Siddim. Against Kedarlamer king of Elam, Tidal king of Goyim, Amraphel king of Shinar, and Arioch king of Elasa, for kings against five. Now the valley of Siddim was full of tar pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, and they fell into them. But those who survived fled to the hill country. Then they took all the possessions of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their food supply, and departed. They also took Lot, Abram's nephew, and his possessions and departed, for he was living in Sodom. Then a survivor came and told Abram the Hebrew. Now he was residing by the oaks of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and brother of Aner, and they were allies with Abram. When Abram heard that his relative had been taken captive, he led out his trained men, born in his house, numbering 318, and went in pursuit as far as Dan. Then he divided his forces against them by night, he and his servants, and defeated them, and pursued them as far as Hobah, which is north of Damascus. He brought back all the possessions, and also brought back his relative Lot with his possessions, and also the women, and the other people. Then after his return from the defeat of Kedarlamer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shave, that is, the king's valley. And Melchizedek the king of Salem brought out bread and wine, now he was a priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has handed over your enemies to you. And he gave him a tenth of everything. Then the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give the people to me and take the possessions for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have sworn to the Lord God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, so that you do not say, I have made Abram rich. I will take nothing except what the young men have eaten, and the share of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their share. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had not borne him a child, but she had an Egyptian slave woman whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Please have relations with my slave woman, perhaps I will obtain children through her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. And so after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Abram's wife Sarai took Hagar the Egyptian, her slave woman, and gave her to her husband Abram as his wife. Then he had relations with Hagar, and she conceived, and when Hagar became aware that she had conceived, her mistress was insignificant in her sight. So Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be upon you. I put my slave woman into your arms, but when she saw that she had conceived, I was insignificant in her sight. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Look, your slave woman is in your power, do to her what is good in your sight. So Sarai treated her harshly, and she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. He said, Hagar, Sarai's slave woman, from where have you come, and where are you going? And she said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai. 
So the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress, and submit to her authority. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will greatly multiply your descendants so that they will be too many to count. The angel of the Lord said to her further, Behold, you are pregnant, and you will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. But he will be a wild donkey of a man, his hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him, and he will live in defiance of all his brothers. Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are a God who sees me, for she said, Have I even seen him here and lived after he saw me? Therefore the well was called Birlahai Roy, behold, it is between Kadesh and Baird. So Hagar bore a son to Abram, and Abram named his son, to whom Hagar gave birth, Ishmael. 16 Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to him. Now when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me, and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you will be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall you be named Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. 7. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your descendants after you. 8. And I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land where you live as a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. God said further to Abraham, Now as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep, between me and you and your descendants after you, every male among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be the sign of the covenant between me and you. And every male among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised throughout your generations, including a slave who is born in the house or who is bought with money from any foreigner, who is not of your descendants. A slave who is born in your house or who is bought with your money shall certainly be circumcised, so my covenant shall be in your flesh as an everlasting covenant. But as for an uncircumcised male, one who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people, he has broken my covenant. Then God said to Abraham, As for your wife Sarai, you shall not call her by the name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and indeed I will give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, kings of peoples will come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Will a child be born to a man a hundred years old? And will Sarah, who is ninety years old, give birth to a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh that Ishmael might live before you. But God said, No, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you shall name him Isaac and I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you, behold, I will bless him, and make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this season next year. When he finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took his son Ishmael, and all the slaves who were born in his house and all who were bought with his money, 
every male among the men of Abraham's household, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin on this very same day, as God had said to him. Now Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And his son Ishmael was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. On this very same day Abraham was circumcised, as well as his son Ishmael. And all the men of his household, those who were born in the house or bought with money from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. Now the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, while he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. When he raised his eyes and looked, behold, three men were standing opposite him, and when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed down to the ground, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servant by. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet, and make yourselves comfortable under the tree. And I will bring a piece of bread, so that you may refresh yourselves, after that you may go on, since you have visited your servant. And they said, So do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah, and said, Quickly, prepare three measures of fine flour, knead it, and make bread cakes. Abraham also ran to the herd, and took a tender and choice calf and gave it to the servant, and he hurried to prepare it. He took curds and milk and the calf which he had prepared, and set it before them, and he was standing by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. He said, I will certainly return to you at this time next year, and behold, your wife Sarah will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, Sarah was past childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have become old, am I to have pleasure, my Lord being old also? But the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I actually give birth to a child, when I am so old? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you, at this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah denied it, however, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. Then the men rose up from there, and looked down toward Sodom, and Abraham was walking with them to send them off. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Since Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, and in him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. For I have chosen him, so that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he has spoken about him. And the Lord said, the outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great, and their sin is exceedingly grave. I will go down now and see whether they have done entirely as the outcry, which has come to me indicates, and if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham was still standing before the Lord. Abraham approached and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous people within the city, will you indeed sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth deal justly? So the Lord said, if I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare the entire place on their account. And Abraham replied, Now behold, I have ventured to speak to the Lord, although I am only dust and ashes. 
Suppose the fifty righteous are lacking five, will you destroy the entire city because of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. And he spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose forty are found there. And he said, I will not do it on account of the forty. Then he said, O oh, may the Lord not be angry, and I shall speak, suppose thirty are found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Now behold, I have ventured to speak to the Lord, suppose twenty are found there. And he said, I will not destroy it on account of the twenty. Then he said, O oh, may the Lord not be angry, and I shall speak only this once, suppose ten are found there. And he said, I will not destroy it on account of the ten. As soon as he had finished speaking to Abraham the Lord departed, and Abraham returned to his place. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he stood up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. Two and he said, Now behold, my lords, please turn aside into your servant's house, and spend the night, and wash your feet, then you may rise early and go on your way. They said, No, but we shall spend the night in the public square. Yet he strongly urged them, so they turned aside to him and entered his house, and he prepared a feast for them and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, surrounded the house, both young and old, all the people from every quarter. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may have relations with them. But Lot went out to them at the doorway, and shut the door behind him. And said, Please, my brothers, do not act wickedly. Now look, I have two daughters who have not had relations with any man, please let me bring them out to you, and do to them whatever you like, only do not do anything to these men, because they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, Get out of the way. They also said, This one came in as a foreigner, and already he is acting like a judge, now we will treat you worse than them. So they pressed hard against Lot and moved forward to break the door. But the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house with them, and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, from the small to the great, so that they became weary of trying to find the doorway. Then the two men said to Lot, Whom else do you have here? A son-in-law and your sons and daughters, and whomever you have in the city, bring them out of the place. For we are about to destroy this place, because their outcry has become so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were to marry his daughters, and said, Up, get out of this place, for the Lord is destroying the city. But he appeared to his sons-in-law to be joking. When morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he hesitated. So the men grasped his hand and the hand of his wife and the hands of his two daughters, because the compassion of the Lord was upon him, and they brought him out and put him outside the city. When they had brought them outside, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, and do not stay anywhere in the surrounding area, escape to the mountains, or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, O oh no, my lords! Now behold, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have magnified your compassion, which you have shown me by saving my life, but I cannot escape to the mountains, for the disaster will overtake me and I will die. Now behold, this town is near enough to flee to, and it is small. Please, let me escape there, is it not small, 
so that my life may be saved. And he said to him, Behold, I grant you this request also, not to overthrow the town of which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore the town was named Zor. The sun had risen over the earth when Lot came to Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities, and all the surrounding area, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife, from behind him, looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Now Abraham got up early in the morning and went to the place where he had stood before the Lord. And he looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the surrounding area, and behold, he saw the smoke of the land ascended like the smoke of a furnace. So it came about, when God destroyed the cities of the surrounding area, that God remembered Abraham, and sent Lot out of the midst of the destruction, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had lived. Now Lot went up from Zor with his two daughters and stayed in the mountains, because he was afraid to stay in Zor, and he stayed in a cave, he and his two daughters. Then the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to have relations with us according to the custom of all the earth. Come, let's make our father drink wine, and let's sleep with him so that we may keep our family alive through our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and slept with her father, and he did not know when she lay down or got up. On the following day, the firstborn said to the younger, Look, I slept last night with my father, let's make him drink wine tonight too, then you go in and sleep with him, so that we may keep our family alive through our father. So they had their father drink wine that night too, and the younger got up and slept with him, and he did not know when she lay down or got up. And so both of the daughters of Lot conceived by their father. The firstborn gave birth to a son, and named him Moab, he is the father of the Moabites to this day. As for the younger, she also gave birth to a son, and named him Ben-Ami, he is the father of the sons of Ammon to this day. Now Abraham journeyed from there toward the land of the Negev, and settled between Kadesh and Shur, then he lived for a time in Gerar. And Abraham said of his wife Sarah, she is my sister. So Abimelech king of Gerar sent men and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream of the night, and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is married. Now Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will you kill a nation, even though blameless? Did he himself not say to me, she is my sister. And she herself said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands I have done this. Then God said to him in the dream, Yes, I know that in the integrity of your heart you have done this, and I also kept you from sinning against me, therefore I did not let you touch her. Now then, return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you and you will live. But if you do not return her, know that you will certainly die, you and all who are yours. So Abimelech got up early in the morning and called all his servants, and told all these things in their presence, and the people were greatly frightened. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? And how have I sinned against you? that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin. You have done to me things that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What have you encountered, that you have done this thing? Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely there is no fear of God in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she actually is my sister, the daughter of my father but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. 
And it came about, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said to her, This is the kindness which you will show to me, everywhere we go, say of me, He is my brother. Abimelech then took sheep and oxen and male and female servants, and gave them to Abraham, and returned his wife Sarah to him. Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you, settle wherever you please. To Sarah he said, Look, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. It is your vindication before all who are with you, and before everyone you are cleared. Then Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his female slaves, so that they gave birth to children. For the Lord had completely closed all the wombs of the household of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Then the Lord took note of Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. So Sarah conceived and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the appointed time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham named his son who was born to him, the son whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has made laughter for me, everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have given birth to a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham held a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. Now Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, mocking Isaac. Therefore she said to Abraham, Drive out this slave woman and her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not be an heir with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because of his son Ishmael. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and your slave woman, Whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her, for through Isaac your descendants shall be named. And of the son of the slave woman I will make a nation also, because he is your descendant. So Abraham got up early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water, and gave them to Hagar, putting them on her shoulder, and gave her the boy, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was used up, she left the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him, about a bowshot away, for she said, May I not see the boy die? And she sat opposite him, and raised her voice and wept. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter with you, Hagar? Do not fear, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Get up, lift up the boy, and hold him by the hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy, and he grew, and he lived in the wilderness and became an archer. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Now it came about at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, spoke to Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. So now, swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me or with my offspring or with my descendants, but according to the kindness that I have shown to you, you shall show to me and to the land in which you have resided. Abraham said, I swear it. But Abraham complained to Abimelech because of the well of water which the servants of Abimelech had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing, you did not tell me, nor did I hear of it until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, 
and the two of them made a covenant. But Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What do these seven ewe lambs mean, which you have set by themselves? He said, You shall take these seven ewe lambs from my hand so that it may be a witness for me, that I dug this well. Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because there the two of them took an oath. So they made a covenant at Beersheba, and Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, got up and returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree at Beersheba, and there he called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham resided in the land of the Philistines for many days. Now it came about after these things, that God tested Abraham, and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham got up early in the morning and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he split wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, and I and the boy will go over there, and we will worship and return to you. And Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac spoke to his father Abraham and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood, and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. And Abraham reached out with his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not reach out your hand against the boy, and do not do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham named that place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven, and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Indeed I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand, which is on the seashore and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. And in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they got up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham lived in Beersheba. Now it came about after these things, that Abraham was told, saying, Behold, Milcah also has borne children to your brother Nahor. You see his firstborn, Buzz his brother, Kemuel, the father of Aram. Chesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bethuel. And it was Bethuel who fathered Rebekah. These eight Milka bore to Nahar, Abraham's brother. His concubine, whose name was Reuma, also gave birth to Teba, Gaham, Tahash, and Makkah. 
Now Sarah lived 127 years, these were the years of the life of Sarah. Sarah died in Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham came in to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Then Abraham arose from mourning before his dead, and spoke to the sons of Hate, saying, I am a stranger and a foreign resident among you, give me a burial site among you so that I may bury my dead out of my sight. The sons of Hate answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my lord, you are a mighty prince among us, bury your dead in the choicest of our graves, none of us will refuse you his grave for burying your dead. So Abraham stood up and bowed to the people of the land, the sons of Hate. And he spoke with them, saying, If you are willing to let me bury my dead out of my sight, listen to me, and plead with Ephron the son of Zohar for me. That he may give me the cave of Machpelah which he owns, which is at the end of his field, for the full price let him give it to me in your presence for a burial site. Now Ephron was sitting among the sons of Hate, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham so that the sons of Hate heard, that is, all who entered the gate of his city, saying, No, my lord, listen to me, I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. In the presence of the sons of my people I give it to you, bury your dead. And Abraham bowed before the people of the land. But he spoke to Ephron so that the people of the land heard, saying, If you will only please listen to me, I will give the price of the field, accept it from me so that I may bury my dead there. Then Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My lord, listen to me, a plot of land worth four hundred shekels of silver, what is that between me and you? So bury your dead. Abraham listened to Ephron, and Abraham weighed out for Ephron the silver which he had named in the presence of the sons of Hate, four hundred shekels of silver, currency acceptable to a merchant. So Ephron's field, which was in Machpelah, which faced Mamre, the field, and the cave which was in it, and all the trees which were in the field, that were within all the confines of its border, were deeded over. To Abraham as a possession in the presence of the sons of Hate, before all who entered the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave of the field of Machpelah facing Mamre, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave that was in it were deeded over to Abraham for a burial site by the sons of Hate. Now Abraham was old, advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in every way. Two Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household who was in charge of all that he owned, Please place your hand under my thigh. And I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I live. But you will go to my country and to my relatives, and take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Suppose the woman is not willing to follow me to this land, should I take your son back to the land from where you came? Then Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my birth, and who spoke to me and who swore to me, saying, To your descendants I will give this land, he will send his angel ahead of you, and you will take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free of this oath of mine, only do not take my son back there. So the servant placed his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham, and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten camels from the camels of his master, and went out with a variety of good things of his master's in his hand, so he set out and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahar. He made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water when it was evening, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, Lord, 
God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today, and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now may it be that the young woman to whom I say, Please let down your jar so that I may drink, and who answers, Drink, and I will water your camels also, may she be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac, and by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it came about, before he had finished speaking, that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel the son of Milcah, the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor, came out with her jar on her shoulder. The young woman was very beautiful, a virgin, no man had had relations with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her, and said, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she said, Drink, my lord, then she quickly lowered her jar to her hand, and gave him a drink. Now when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will also draw water for your camels until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, and ran back to the well to draw, and she drew for all his camels. Meanwhile, the man was taking a close look at her in silence, to find out whether the Lord had made his journey successful or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing a half shekel, and two bracelets for her wrists weighing ten shekels in gold. And he said, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room for us to stay overnight at your father's house? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, Milcah's son, whom she bore to Nahar. Again she said to him, We have plenty of both straw and feed, and room to stay overnight. Then the man bowed low and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and his trustworthiness toward my master, as for me, the Lord has guided me in the way to the house of my master's brothers. Then the young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran outside to the man at the spring. When he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists, and when he heard the words of his sister Rebekah, saying, This is what the man said to me, he went to the man, and behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. And he said, Come in, blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside, since I have prepared the house, and a place for the camels? So the man entered the house. Then Laban unloaded the camels, and he gave straw and feed to the camels, and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. But when food was set before him to eat, he said, I will not eat until I have stated my business. And he said, Speak on. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, so that he has become rich, and he has given him flocks and herds, and silver and gold, and servants and slave women, and camels and donkeys. Now my master's wife Sarah bore a son to my master in her old age, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live. But you shall go to my father's house and to my relatives, and take a wife for my son. Then I said to my master, Suppose the woman does not follow me. And he said to me, The Lord, before whom I have walked, will send his angel with you to make your journey successful, and you will take a wife for my son from my relatives and from my father's house. Then you will be free from my oath, when you come to my relatives, and if they do not give her to you, you will be free from my oath. So I came today to the spring, and said, Lord, God of my master Abraham, if now you will make my journey on which I have been going successful. 
Behold, I am standing by the spring, and may it be that the young unmarried woman who comes out to draw water, and to whom I say, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she says to me, You drink, and I will draw for your camels also, let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder, and went down to the spring and drew water, and I said to her, Please let me drink. 46 She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder, and said, Drink, and I will water your camels also, so I drank, and she watered the camels also. Then I asked her, and said, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him, and I put the ring on her nose, and the bracelets on her wrists. And I bowed low and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had guided me in the right way to take the daughter of my master's brother for his son. So now if you are going to deal kindly and truthfully with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me now, so that I may turn to the right or the left. Then Laban and Bethuel replied, The matter has come from the Lord, so we cannot speak to you bad or good. Here is Rebekah before you, take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed himself to the ground before the Lord. 53 And the servant brought out articles of silver and articles of gold, and garments, and gave them to Rebekah, he also gave precious things to her brother and to her mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night. When they got up in the morning, he said, Send me away to my master. But her brother and her mother said, Let the young woman stay with us a few days, say ten, afterward she may go. However, he said to them, Do not delay me, since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away so that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the young woman and ask her. Then they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gate of those who hate them. Then Rebekah got up with her female attendants, and they mounted the camels and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and departed. Now Isaac had come back from a journey to Beer Lahiroi, for he was living in the Negev. 63 Isaac went out to meditate in the field toward evening, and he raised his eyes and looked, and behold, camels were coming. Rebekah raised her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from the camel. She said to the servant, Who is that man walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, He is my master. Then she took her veil and covered herself. The servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, so Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Now Abraham took another wife, whose name was Keturah. She bore to him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan fathered Sheba and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Ashurim, Latushim, and Lumim. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Ephor, Hanak, Abida, and Elda. All of these were the sons of Keturah. Now Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. But to the sons of his concubines, Abraham gave gifts while he was still living, and sent them away from his son Isaac eastward, to the land of the east. These are all the years of Abraham's life that he lived, 175 years. 
Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and satisfied with life, and he was gathered to his people. Then his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron the son of Zohar the Hittite, facing Mamre. The field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Haight, there Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. It came about after the death of Abraham, that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac lived by Beerlahiroi. Now these are the records of the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's slave woman, bore to Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael, by their names, in the order of their birth, Nebaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Kedar, Adbeel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jetur, Nafish, and Kadima. These are the sons of Ishmael and these are their names, by their villages, and by their camps, twelve princes according to their tribes. These are the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years, and he breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people. They settled from Havila to Shur which is east of Egypt going toward Assyria, he settled in defiance of all his relatives. Now these are the records of the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son, Abraham fathered Isaac, twenty and Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel the Aramean of Paddan Aram, the sister of Laban the Aramean, to be his wife. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she was unable to have children, and the Lord answered him, and his wife Rebekah conceived. But the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is so, why am I in this condition? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples will be separated from your body, and one people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When her days leading to the delivery were at an end, behold, there were twins in her womb. Twenty-five now the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they named him Esau. Twenty-six afterward his brother came out with his hand holding on to Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob, and Isaac was sixty years old when she gave birth to them. When the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the field, but Jacob was a civilized man, living in tents. Now Isaac loved Esau because he had a taste for game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. When Jacob had cooked a stew one day, Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, Please let me have a mouthful of that red stuff there, for I am exhausted. Therefore he was called Edom by name. But Jacob said, First sell me your birthright. Esau said, Look, I am about to die, so of what use then is the birthright to me? And Jacob said, First swear to me, so he swore an oath to him, and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank, and got up and went on his way. So Esau despised his birthright. Now there was a famine in the land, besides the previous famine that had occurred in the days of Abraham. So Isaac went to Gerar, to Abimelech king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt, stay in the land of which I shall tell you. Live for a time in this land and I will be with you and bless you, for to you and to your descendants I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and will give your descendants all these lands, and by your descendants all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and fulfilled his duty to me, and kept my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac lived in Gerar. 
When the men of the place asked about his wife, he said, She is my sister, for he was afraid to say, My wife, thinking, the men of the place might kill me on account of Rebekah, since she is beautiful. Now it came about, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked down through a window, and saw them, and behold, Isaac was caressing his wife Rebekah. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, she certainly is your wife. So how is it that you said, She is my sister? And Isaac said to him, Because I thought, otherwise I might be killed on account of her. And Abimelech said, What is this that you have done to us? One of the people might easily have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech commanded all the people, saying, He who touches this man or his wife will certainly be put to death. Now Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundred times as much. And the Lord blessed him. And the man became rich, and continued to grow richer until he became very wealthy. For he had possessions of flocks and herds, and a great household, so that the Philistines envied him. Now all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up by filling them with dirt. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are too powerful for us. So Isaac departed from there and camped in the valley of Gerar, and settled there. Then Isaac dug again the wells of water which had been dug in the days of his father Abraham, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham, and he gave them the same names which his father had given them. But when Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of flowing water, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with the herdsmen of Isaac, saying, The water is ours. So he named the well Ezek because they argued with him. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over it too, so he named it Sitna. Then he moved away from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it, so he named it Rehoboth, for he said, At last the Lord has made room for us, and we will be fruitful in the land. And he went up from there to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham, do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants, for the sake of my servant Abraham. So he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there, and their Isaac's servants dug a well. Then Abimelech came to him from Gerar with his adviser Ahuzath, and Phicol the commander of his army. Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, since you hate me and have sent me away from you? They said, We have seen plainly that the Lord has been with you, so we said, An oath must now be taken by us, that is, by you and us. So let us make a covenant with you, that you will do us no harm, just as we have not touched you and have done to you nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. Then he made them a feast, and they ate and drank. In the morning they got up early and exchanged oaths, then Isaac sent them away, and they left him in peace. Now it came about on the same day, that Isaac's servants came in and told him about the well which they had dug, and said to him, We have found water. So he called it Sheba, Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. When Esau was forty years old he married Judith the daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and Basemath the daughter of Elon the Hittite. And they brought grief to Isaac and Rebekah. Now it came about, when Isaac was old and his eyes were too dim to see, that he called his older son Esau and said to him, My son. And he said to him, Here I am. Then Isaac said, Behold now, I am old and I do not know the day of my death. Now then, please take your gear, your quiver, and your bow, 
and go out to the field and hunt game for me. And prepare a delicious meal for me such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, so that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening while Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went to the field to hunt for game to bring home, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Behold, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau, saying, Bring me some game and prepare a delicious meal for me, so that I may eat, and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. So now, my son, listen to me as I command you. Go now to the flock and bring me two choice young goats from there, so that I may prepare them as a delicious meal for your father, such as he loves. Then you shall bring it to your father, that he may eat, so that he may bless you before his death. But Jacob said to his mother Rebekah, Behold, my brother Esau is a hairy man and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will touch me, then I will be like a deceiver in his sight, and I will bring upon myself a curse and not a blessing. But his mother said to him, Your curse be on me, my son, only obey my voice, and go, get the goats for me. So he went and got them, and brought them to his mother, and his mother made a delicious meal such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the best garments of her elder son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on her younger son Jacob. And she put the skins of the young goats on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. She also gave the delicious meal and the bread which she had made to her son Jacob. Then he came to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? 19 Jacob said to his father, I am Esau your firstborn, I have done as you told me. Come now, sit and eat of my game, so that you may bless me. Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord your God made it come to me. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come close, so that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob came close to his father Isaac, and he touched him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him, because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Are you really my son Esau? And he said, I am. So he said, Bring it to me, and I will eat of my son's game, that I may bless you. And he brought it to him, and he ate, he also brought him wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, Please come close and kiss me, my son. So he came close and kissed him, and when he smelled the smell of his garments, he blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed, 28 Now may God give you of the dew of heaven, and of the fatness of the earth, and an abundance of grain and new wine. May people serve you, and nations bow down to you, be master of your brothers, and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be those who curse you, and blessed be those who bless you. Now it came about, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had hardly gone out from the presence of his father Isaac, that his brother Esau came in from his hunting. Then he also made a delicious meal, and brought it to his father, and he said to his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that you may bless me. His father Isaac said to him, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Then Isaac trembled violently, and said, Who then was he who hunted game and brought it to me, so that I ate from all of it before you came, and blessed him? Yes, and he shall be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me, me as well, 
my father. And he said, Your brother came deceitfully and has taken away your blessing. Then Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob, for he has betrayed me these two times? He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? But Isaac replied to Esau, Behold, I have made him your master, and I have given to him all his relatives as servants, and with grain and new wine I have sustained him. What then can I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me, me as well, my father. So Esau raised his voice and wept. Then his father Isaac answered and said to him, Behold, away from the fertility of the earth shall be your dwelling, and away from the dew of heaven from above. And by your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother, but it shall come about when you become restless, that you will break his yoke from your neck. So Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him, and Esau said to himself, the days of mourning for my father are near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. Now when the words of her elder son Esau were reported to Rebekah, she sent word and called her younger son Jacob, and said to him, Behold your brother Esau is consoling himself concerning you by planning to kill you. Now then, my son, obey my voice, and arise, flee to Haran, to my brother Laban. Stay with him a few days, until your brother's fury subsides. Until your brother's anger against you subsides and he forgets what you did to him. Then I will send word and get you from there. Why should I lose you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am tired of living because of the daughters of hate, if Jacob takes a wife from the daughters of hate like these from the daughters of the land, what good will my life be to me? So Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and commanded him, saying to him, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Paddan Aram, to the house of Bethuel your mother's father, and from there take to yourself a wife from the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, so that you may become a multitude of peoples. May he also give you the blessing of Abraham, to you and to your descendants with you, so that you may possess the land where you live as a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. Then Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Paddan Aram to Laban, son of Bethuel the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau. Now Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Paddan Aram to take to himself a wife from there, and that when he blessed him he commanded him, saying, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and his mother and had gone to Paddan Aram. So Esau saw that the daughters of Canaan displeased his father Isaac. And Esau went to Ishmael, and married, Besides the wives that he had, Mahalath the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaioth. Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he happened upon a particular place and spent the night there, because the sun had set, and he took one of the stones of the place and made it a support for his head, and lay down in that place. And he had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Then behold, the Lord was standing above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie I will give to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will also be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south, and in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. 
Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, The Lord is certainly in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob got up early in the morning, and took the stone that he had placed as a support for his head, and set it up as a memorial stone, and poured oil on its top. Then he named that place Bethel, but previously the name of the city had been Luz. Jacob also made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me on this journey that I take, and give me food to eat and garments to wear. And I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone, which I have set up as a memorial stone, will be God's house, and of everything that you give me I will assuredly give a tenth to you. Then Jacob set out on his journey, and went to the land of the people of the east. He looked, and saw a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep were lying there beside it, because they watered the flocks from that well. Now the stone on the mouth of the well was large. When all the flocks were gathered there, they would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep. Then they would put the stone back in its place on the mouth of the well. Jacob said to them, My brothers, where are you from? And they said, We are from Haran. So he said to them, Do you know Laban the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said to them, Is it well with him? And they said, It is well, and here is his daughter Rachel coming with the sheep. Then he said, Look, it is still high day, it is not time for the livestock to be gathered. Water the sheep, and go, pasture them. But they said, We cannot, until all the flocks are gathered, and they roll the stone from the mouth of the well, then we water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. When Jacob saw Rachel the daughter of his mother's brother Laban, and the sheep of his mother's brother Laban, Jacob went up and rolled the stone from the mouth of the well, and watered the flock of his mother's brother Laban. Then Jacob kissed Rachel, and raised his voice and wept. Jacob told Rachel that he was a relative of her father and that he was Rebekah's son, and she ran and told her father. So when Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him, and embraced him and kissed him, and brought him to his house. Then he told Laban all these things. 14 And Laban said to him, You certainly are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters, the name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in figure and appearance. Now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than to give her to another man, stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him like only a few days because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my time is completed, that I may have relations with her. So Laban gathered all the people of the place and held a feast. Now in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to him, and Jacob had relations with her. Laban also gave his female slave Zilpah to his daughter Leah as a slave. So it came about in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served with you? Why then have you deceived me? But Laban said, It is not the practice in our place to marry off the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, 
and we will give you the other also for the service which you shall serve with me, for another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week, and he gave him his daughter Rachel as his wife. Laban also gave his female slave Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as her slave. So Jacob had relations with Rachel also, and indeed he loved Rachel more than Leah, and he served with Laban for another seven years. Now the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, and he opened her womb, but Rachel was unable to have children. Leah conceived and gave birth to a son, and named him Reuben, for she said, Because the Lord has seen my affliction, surely now my husband will love me. Then she conceived again and gave birth to a son, and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. So she named him Simeon. And she conceived again and gave birth to a son, and said, Now this time my husband will become attached to me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore he was named Levi. And she conceived again and gave birth to a son, and said, This time I will praise the Lord. Therefore she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. Now when Rachel saw that she had not borne Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister, and she said to Jacob, Give me children, or else I am going to die. Then Jacob's anger burned against Rachel, and he said, Am I in the place of God, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Then she said, Here is my female slave Bilhah, have relations with her that she may give birth on my knees, so that by her I too may obtain a child. So she gave him her slave Bilhah as a wife, and Jacob had relations with her. Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me, and has indeed heard my voice and has given me a son. Therefore she named him Dan. And Rachel's slave Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. So Rachel said, With mighty wrestling I have wrestled with my sister, and I have indeed prevailed. And she named him Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she took her slave Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as a wife. And Leah's slave Zilpah bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, How fortunate! So she named him Gad. And Leah's slave Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, Happy am I! For women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. Now in the days of wheat harvest Reuben went and found mandric fruits in the field, and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, Is it a small matter for you to take my husband? And would you take my son's mandrakes also? So Rachel said, Therefore he may sleep with you tonight in return for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob came in from the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must have relations with me, for I have indeed hired you with my son's mandrakes. So he slept with her that night. God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Then Leah said, God has given me my reward, because I gave my slave to my husband. So she named him Issachar. And Leah conceived again and bore a sixth son to Jacob. Then Leah said, God has endowed me with a good gift, finally my husband will acknowledge me as his wife, because I have borne him six sons. So she named him Zebulun. Afterward she gave birth to a daughter, and named her Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb. So she conceived and gave birth to a son, and said, God has taken away my disgrace. And she named him Joseph, saying, May the Lord give me another son. Now it came about, 
When Rachel had given birth to Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, so that I may go to my own place and to my own country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go, for you yourself know my service which I have rendered you. But Laban said to him, If it pleases you at all, stay with me, I have determined by divination that the Lord has blessed me on your account. He continued, Name me your wages, and I will give them. But Jacob said to him, You yourself know how I have served you and how your livestock have fared with me. For you had little before I came, and it has increased to a multitude, and the Lord has blessed you wherever I turned. But now, when shall I provide for my own household also? So he said, What shall I give you? And Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this one thing for me, I will again pasture and keep your flock. Let me pass through your entire flock today, removing from there every speckled or spotted sheep and every black sheep among the lambs, and the spotted or speckled among the goats, and those shall be my wages. So my honesty will answer for me later, when you come concerning my wages. Every one that is not speckled or spotted among the goats, or black among the lambs, if found with me, will be considered stolen. Laban said, Good, let it be according to your word. So he removed on that day the striped or spotted male goats, and all the speckled or spotted female goats, every one with white on it, and all the black ones among the sheep, and put them in the care of his sons. And he put a distance of three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Then Jacob took fresh rods of poplar, almond, and plain trees, and peeled white stripes in them, exposing the white that was in the rods. He set the rods which he had peeled in front of the flocks in the drinking troughs, that is, in the watering channels where the flocks came to drink, and they made it when they came to drink. So the flocks made it by the rods, and the flocks delivered striped, speckled, and spotted offspring. Then Jacob separated the lambs, and made the flocks face toward the striped and all the black in the flock of Laban, and he put his own herds apart, and did not put them with Laban's flock. Moreover, whenever the stronger of the flock were mating, Jacob would place the rods in the sight of the flock in the drinking troughs, so that they would mate by the rods. But when the flock was sickly, he did not put them in, so the sickly were Laban's, and the stronger were Jacob's. So the man became exceedingly prosperous, and had large flocks, and female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and from what belonged to our father he has made all this wealth. And Jacob saw the attitude of Laban, and behold, it was not friendly toward him as it had been before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent word and called Rachel and Leah to his flock in the field and said to them, I see your father's attitude, that it is not friendly toward me as it was before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength. Yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times, however, God did not allow him to do me harm. If he said this, the speckled shall be your wages, then all the flock delivered speckled, and if he said this, the striped shall be your wages, then all the flock delivered striped. So God has taken away your father's livestock and given them to me. And it came about at the time when the flock was breeding that I raised my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the male goats that were mating were striped, speckled, or mottled. Then the angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, here I am. He said, 
Now raise your eyes and see that all the male goats that are mating are striped, speckled, or mottled, for I have seen everything that Laban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a memorial stone, where you made a vow to me, now arise, leave this land, and return to the land of your birth. Rachel and Leah said to him, Do we still have any share or inheritance in our father's house? 15 Are we not regarded by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and has also entirely consumed our purchase price. Surely all the wealth which God has taken away from our father belongs to us and our children, now then, do whatever God has told you. Then Jacob stood up and put his children and his wives on camels. And he drove away all his livestock and all his property which he had acquired, the livestock he possessed which he had acquired in Paddan Aram, to go to the land of Canaan to his father Isaac. Laban had gone to shear his flock, and Rachel stole the household idols that were her father's. And Jacob deceived Laban the Aramean by not telling him that he was fleeing. So he fled with all that he had, and he got up and crossed the Euphrates River, and set out for the hill country of Gilead. When Laban was informed on the third day that Jacob had fled, he took his kinsmen with him and pursued him a distance of seven days' journey, and he overtook him in the hill country of Gilead. However, God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream of the night and said to him, Be careful that you do not speak to Jacob either good or bad. And Laban caught up with Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country, and Laban with his kinsmen camped in the hill country of Gilead. Then Laban said to Jacob, What have you done by deceiving me and carrying away my daughters like captives of the sword? Why did you flee secretly and deceive me, and did not tell me, so that I might have sent you away with joy and with songs, with tambourine and with lyre? And did not allow me to kiss my grandchildren and my daughters? Now you have done foolishly. It is in my power to do you harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Be careful not to speak either good or bad to Jacob. Now you have indeed gone away because you longed greatly for your father's house, but why did you steal my gods? Then Jacob replied to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. The one with whom you find your gods shall not live, in the presence of our relatives point out what is yours among my belongings and take it for yourself. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. So Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the tent of the two slave women, but he did not find them. Then he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the household idols and put them in the camel's saddlebag, and she sat on them. So Laban searched through all the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, May my lord not be angry that I cannot stand in your presence, because the way of women is upon me. So he searched but did not find the household idols. Then Jacob became angry and argued with Laban, and Jacob said to Laban, What is my offense? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me? Though you have searched through all my property, what have you found of all your household property? Set it here in front of my relatives and your relatives, so that they may decide between the two of us. For these twenty years I have been with you, your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried, nor have I eaten the rams of your flocks. I did not even bring to you that which was torn by wild animals, I took the loss myself. You demanded it of my hand whether stolen by day or stolen by night. This is how I was, by day the heat consumed me and the frost by night, and my sleep fled from my eyes. For these twenty years I have been in your house, I served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock, 
and you changed my wages ten times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham and the fear of Isaac, had not been for me, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, so he rendered judgment last night. Then Laban replied to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, the children are my grandchildren, the flocks are my flocks, and everything that you see is mine. But what can I do this day to these daughters of mine or to their children to whom they have given birth? So now come, let's make a covenant, you and I, and it shall be a witness between you and me. Then Jacob took a stone and set it up as a memorial stone. Jacob said to his relatives, Gather stones. So they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there by the heap. Now Laban called it Jegar Sahadutha, but Jacob called it Gailed. Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore it was named Gailed. And Mizpah, for he said, May the Lord keep watch between you and me when we are absent one from the other. If you mistreat my daughters, or if you take wives besides my daughters, although no one is with us, see, God is witness between you and me. Laban also said to Jacob, Behold this heap and behold the memorial stone which I have set between you and me. This heap is a witness, and the memorial stone is a witness, that I will not pass by this heap to you for harm, and you will not pass by this heap and this memorial stone to me, for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. So Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain, and called his relatives to the meal, and they ate the meal and spent the night on the mountain. Then early in the morning Laban got up, and kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. Then Laban departed and returned to his place. Now as Jacob went on his way, the angels of God met him. And when he saw them, Jacob said, This is God's camp. So he named that place Mahanaim. Then Jacob sent messengers ahead of himself to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. He commanded them, saying, This is what you shall say to my lord Esau, Your servant Jacob says the following, I have resided with Laban, and stayed until now. And I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male and female servants, and I have sent messengers to tell my lord, so that I may find favor in your sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and furthermore he is coming to meet you, and four hundred men are with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people who were with him, and the flocks, the herds, and the camels, into two companies. For he said, if Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the company which is left will escape. Then Jacob said, God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the favor and of all the faithfulness, which you have shown to your servant, for with only my staff I crossed this Jordan and now I have become two companies. Save me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, that he will come and attack me in the mothers with the children. For you said, I will assuredly make you prosper and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which is too great to be counted. So he spent the night there. Then he selected from what he had with him a gift for his brother Esau. Two hundred female goats and twenty male goats, two hundred ewes and twenty rams, fifteen thirty milking camels and their colts, forty cows and ten bulls, and twenty female donkeys and ten male donkeys. Then he placed them in the care of his servants, every flock by itself, and said to his servants, 
pass on ahead of me, and put a space between flocks. And he commanded the one in front, saying, When my brother Esau meets you and asks you, saying, To whom do you belong, and where are you going, and to whom do these animals in front of you belong? Then you shall say, These belong to your servant Jacob, it is a gift sent to my lord Esau. And behold, he also is behind us. Then he commanded also the second and the third, and all those who followed the flocks, saying, In this way you shall speak to Esau when you find him. And you shall say, Behold, your servant Jacob also is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the gift that goes ahead of me. Then afterward I will see his face, perhaps he will accept me. So the gift passed on ahead of him, while he himself spent that night in the camp. Now he got up that same night and took his two wives, his two female slaves, and his eleven children, and crossed the shallow place of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream. And he sent across whatever he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he had not prevailed against him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have contended with God and with men, and have prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob named the place Peniel, for he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. Now the sun rose upon him just as he crossed over Penel, and he was limping on his hip. Therefore, to this day the sons of Israel do not eat the tendon of the hip which is on the socket of the hip, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the tendon of the hip. Then Jacob raised his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was coming, and four hundred men with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel, and the two slave women. He put the slave women and their children in front, and Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph last. But he himself passed on ahead of them and bowed down to the ground seven times, until he came near to his brother. Then Esau ran to meet him and embraced him, and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. He raised his eyes and saw the women and the children, and said, Who are these with you? So he said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the slave women came forward with their children, and they bowed down. And Leah likewise came forward with her children, and they bowed down and afterward Joseph came forward with Rachel, and they bowed down. And he said, What do you mean by all this company which I have met? And he said, To find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have plenty, my brother, let what you have be your own. Jacob said, No, please, if now I have found favor in your sight, then accept my gift from my hand, for I see your face as one sees the face of God, and you have received me favorably. Please accept my gift which has been brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me and because I have plenty. So he urged him, and he accepted it. Then Esau said, Let's journey on and go, and I will go ahead of you. But he said to him, my Lord knows that the children are frail and that the flocks and herds that are nursing are a matter of concern to me. And if they are driven hard just one day, all the flocks will die. Please let my Lord pass on ahead of his servant, and I will proceed at my leisure, at the pace of the cattle that are ahead of me and at the pace of the children, 
until I come to my lord at Seir. Then Esau said, Please let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, What need is there? Let me find favor in the sight of my lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. But Jacob journeyed to Sukkot, and built for himself a house and made booths for his livestock, therefore the place is named Sukkot. Now Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Paddan Aram, and camped before the city. He bought the plot of land where he had pitched his tent from the hand of the sons of Hammer, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of money. Then he erected there an altar and called it Elilo Israel. Now Dinah the daughter of Leah, whom she had borne to Jacob, went out to visit the daughters of the land. When Shechem the son of Hammer the Hivite, the prince of the land, saw her, he took her and lay with her and raped her. But he was deeply attracted to Dinah the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the girl and spoke tenderly to her. So Shechem spoke to his father Hammer, saying, Get me this young woman as a wife. Now Jacob heard that he had defiled his daughter Dinah, but his sons were with his livestock in the field, so Jacob said nothing until they came in. Then Hammer the father of Shechem went out to Jacob to speak with him. Now the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard about it, and the men were grieved, and they were very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by sleeping with Jacob's daughter, for such a thing ought not to be done. But Hammer spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter, please give her to him in marriage. And intermarry with us, give your daughters to us and take our daughters for yourselves. So you will live with us, and the land shall be open to you, live and trade in it and acquire property in it. Shechem also said to her father and to her brothers, Let me find favor in your sight, and I will give whatever you tell me. Demand of me ever so much bridal payment and gift, and I will give whatever you tell me, but give me the girl in marriage. But Jacob's sons answered Shechem and his father Hammer with deceit, because he had defiled their sister Dinah. They said to them, We cannot do this thing, that is, give our sister to a man who is uncircumcised, for that would be a disgrace to us. Only on this condition will we consent to you, if you will become like us, in that every male of you will be circumcised. Then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters for ourselves, and we will live with you and become one people. But if you do not listen to us to be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and go. Now their words seemed reasonable to Hammer and Shechem, Hammer's son. The young man did not delay to do this, because he was delighted with Jacob's daughter. Now he was more respected than all the household of his father. So Hammer and his son Shechem came to the gate of their city and spoke to the people of their city, saying, These men are friendly to us, therefore let them live in the land and trade in it, for behold, the land is large enough for them. We will take their daughters in marriage, and give our daughters to them. Only on this condition will the men consent to us to live with us, to become one people, that every male among us be circumcised just as they are circumcised. Will their livestock and their property and all their animals not be ours? Let's just consent to them, and they will live with us. All who went out of the gate of his city listened to Hammer and to his son Shechem, and every male was circumcised, all who went out of the gate of his city. Now it came about on the third day, when they were in pain, that two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and came upon the city undetected, and killed every male. They killed Hammer and his son Shechem with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah from Shechem's house, and left. Jacob's sons came upon those killed and looted the city, because they had defiled their sister. 
They took their flocks, their herds, and their donkeys, and that which was in the city and that which was in the field. And they captured and looted all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives, even everything that was in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have brought trouble on me by making me repulsive among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and since my men are few in number, they will band together against me and attack me, and I will be destroyed, I and my household. But they said, Should he treat our sister like a prostitute? Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and live there, and make an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Remove the foreign gods which are among you, and purify yourselves and change your garments. And let's arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me on the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which they had and the rings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was near Shechem. As they journeyed, there was a great terror upon the cities which were around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is, Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. Then he built an altar there, and called the place El Bethel, because their God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried below Bethel under the oak, and it was named Alon Bekuth. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Paddan Aram, and he blessed him. God said to him, Your name is Jacob, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So he called him Israel. God also said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply, a nation and a multitude of nations shall come from you, and kings shall come from you. And the land which I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I will give to you, and I will give the land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at the place where he had spoken with him. So Jacob set up a memorial stone in the place where he had spoken with him, a memorial of stone, and he poured out a drink offering on it, he also poured oil on it. And Jacob named the place where God had spoken with him, Bethel. Then they journeyed on from Bethel, but when there was still some distance to go to Ephrath, Rachel began to give birth and she suffered severe difficulties in her labor. And when she was suffering severe difficulties in her labor, the midwife said to her, Do not fear, for you have another son. And it came about, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she named him Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a memorial stone over her grave, that is the memorial stone of Rachel's grave to this day. Then Israel journeyed on and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Eder. And it came about, while Israel was living in that land, that Reuben went and slept with his father's concubine Bilhah, and Israel heard about it. Now there were twelve sons of Jacob. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. And the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's female slave, were Dan and Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's female slave, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Paddan Aram. Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre of Kiriatharba, that is, Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had resided. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years. Then Isaac breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people, an old man of ripe age, 
and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Now these are the records of the generations of Esau, that is, Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Adah the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Oholobamah the daughter of Anna, the granddaughter of Zibion the Hivite. Also Basemath, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nebaioth. Adah bore Eliphaz to Esau, and Basemath gave birth to Ruel. And Oholobamah gave birth to Jush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all his household, and his livestock and all his cattle, and all his property which he had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went to another land away from his brother Jacob. For their possessions had become too great for them to live together, and the land where they resided could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau lived in the hill country of Seir, Esau is Edom. These then are the records of the generations of Esau the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz the son of Esau's wife Ada, and Ruel the son of Esau's wife Basemath. The sons of Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gadam, and Kenas. Timna was a concubine of Esau's son Eliphaz, and she bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These are the sons of Esau's wife Adah. And these are the sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zira, Shammah, and Mizah. These were the sons of Esau's wife Basemath. And these were the sons of Esau's wife Oholobamah, the daughter of Anna, the granddaughter of Zibion. She bore to Esau Jush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the chiefs of the sons of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, are Chief Taman, Chief Omar, Chief Zepho, Chief Kenas, Chief Korah, Chief Gadam, and Chief Amalek. These are the chiefs descended from Eliphaz in the land of Edom, these are the sons of Adah. And these are the sons of Ruel, Esau's son, Chief Nahath, Chief Zerah, Chief Shammah, and Chief Mizah. These are the chiefs descended from Ruel in the land of Edom, these are the sons of Esau's wife Basemath. And these are the sons of Esau's wife Oholobamah, Chief Jush, Chief Jalam, and Chief Korah. These are the chiefs descended from Esau's wife Oholobamah, the daughter of Anna. These are the sons of Esau, that is, Edom, and these are their chiefs. These are the sons of Seir the Horite, the inhabitants of the land, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, 21 Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. These are the chiefs descended from the Horites, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. And the sons of Lotan were Hori and Hemam, and Lotan's sister was Timna. And these are the sons of Shobal, Alvin, Manahath, Ebel, Shepho, and Onam. And these are the sons of Zibion, Aya and Anna, he is the Anna who found the hot springs in the wilderness when he was pasturing the donkeys of his father Zibion. And these are the children of Anna, Dishan, and Oholobamah, the daughter of Anna. And these are the sons of Dishan, Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Cheran. These are the sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zavan, and Akan. These are the sons of Dishan, Uzi and Aaron. These are the chiefs descended from the Horites, Chief Laden, Chief Shobal, Chief Zibion, Chief Anna, Chief Dishan, Chief Ezer, and Chief Dishan. These are the chiefs descended from the Horites, according to their various chiefs in the land of Seir. Now these are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the sons of Israel. Bela the son of Beer reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Dinhabah. Then Bela died, and Jobab the son of Zerah of Basra became king in his place. 
Then Jobab died, and Hushim of the land of the Temanites became king in his place. Then Hushim died, and Hadad the son of Bedad, who defeated Midian in the field of Moab, became king in his place, and the name of his city was Avith. Then Hadad died, and Samla of Masrika became king in his place. Then Samla died, and Shal of Rehoboth on the Euphrates river became king in his place. Then Shal died, and Balhanan the son of Achbor became king in his place. Then Balhanan the son of Achbor died, and Hadar became king in his place, and the name of his city was Pau, and his wife's name was Mehedabal, the daughter of Matred, daughter of Mezahab. Now these are the names of the chiefs descended from Esau, according to their families and their localities, by their names, Chief Timnah, Chief Alva, Chief Jepheth, Chief Ohalobama, Chief Elah, Chief Pinion, Chief Kenas, Chief Taman, Chief Mibzer, Chief Magdil, and Chief Iram. These are the chiefs of Edom, that is, Esau, the father of the Edomites, according to their settlements in the land of their possession. Now Jacob lived in the land where his father had lived as a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the records of the generations of Jacob. Joseph, when he was seventeen years of age, was pasturing the flock with his brothers, while he was still a youth, along with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his other sons, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a multicolored tunic. And his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, and so they hated him and could not speak to him on friendly terms. Then Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Please listen to this dream which I have had. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaf stood up and also remained standing, and behold, your sheaves gathered around and bowed down to my sheaf. Then his brothers said to him, Are you actually going to reign over us? Or are you really going to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he had yet another dream, and informed his brothers of it, and said, Behold, I have had yet another dream, and behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. Ten he also told it to his father as well as to his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have had? Am I and your mother and your brothers actually going to come to bow down to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Then his brothers went to pasture their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are your brothers not pasturing the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you to them. And he said to him, I will go. Then he said to him, Go now and see about the welfare of your brothers and the welfare of the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. A man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, What are you looking for? He said, I am looking for my brothers, please tell me where they are pasturing the flock. Then the man said, They have moved from here, for I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. When they saw him from a distance, and before he came closer to them, they plotted against him to put him to death. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Now then, come and let's kill him, and throw him into one of the pits, and we will say, A vicious animal devoured him. Then we will see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard this and rescued him out of their hands by saying, Let's not take his life. 
Then Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit that is in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him, so that later he might rescue him out of their hands, to return him to his father. So it came about, when Joseph reached his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the multicolored tunic that was on him. And they took him and threw him into the pit. Now the pit was empty, without any water in it. Then they sat down to eat a meal. But as they raised their eyes and looked, behold, a caravan of Ishmaelites was coming from Gilead, with their camels carrying labdanum resin, balsam, and myrrh, on their way to bring them down to Egypt. And Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it for us to kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, and let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Then some Midianite traders passed by, so they pulled him out and lifted Joseph out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver. So they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now Reuben returned to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, so he tore his garments. Thirty he returned to his brothers and said, The boy is not there, as for me, where am I to go? So they took Joseph's tunic, and slaughtered a male goat, and dipped the tunic in the blood. And they sent the multicolored tunic and brought it to their father and said, We found this, please examine it to see whether it is your son's tunic or not. Then he examined it and said, It is my son's tunic. A vicious animal has devoured him, Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. So Jacob tore his clothes, and put on a sackcloth undergarment over his waist, and mourned for his son many days. Then all his sons and all his daughters got up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, Surely I will go down to Sheol in mourning for my son. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, Pharaoh's officer, the captain of the bodyguard. And it came about at that time, that Judah departed from his brothers and visited a certain Adullamite, whose name was Hira. Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her as a wife and had relations with her. And she conceived and gave birth to a son, and he named him Er. Then she conceived again and gave birth to a son, and she named him Onan. She gave birth to yet another son and named him Shelah, and it was at Chezib that she gave birth to him. Now Judah took a wife for Er his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Er, Judah's firstborn, was evil in the sight of the Lord, so the Lord took his life. Then Judah said to Onan, Have relations with your brother's wife and perform your duty as a brother-in-law to her, and raise up a child for your brother. Now Onan knew that the child would not be his, so when he had relations with his brother's wife, he wasted his seed on the ground so that he would not give a child to his brother. But what he did was displeasing in the sight of the Lord, so he took his life also. Then Judah said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Remain a widow in your father's house until my son Shelah grows up, for he thought, I am afraid that he too may die like his brothers. So Tamar went and lived in her father's house. Now after a considerable time Shua's daughter, the wife of Judah, died, and when the time of mourning was ended, Judah went up to his sheep shearers at Timnah, he and his friend Hira the Adullamite. And Tamar was told, Behold, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. So she removed her widow's garments and covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in the gateway of Enaim, which is on the road to Timnah, for she saw that Shelah had grown up, and she had not been given to him as a wife. When Judah saw her, he assumed she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face.
So he turned aside to her by the road, and said, Here now, let me have relations with you, for he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What will you give me, that you may have relations with me? He said, Therefore, I will send you a young goat from the flock. She then said, Will you give a pledge until you send it? He said, What pledge shall I give you? And she said, Your seal and your cord, and your staff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her and had relations with her, and she conceived by him. Then she got up and departed, and removed her veil and put on her widow's garments. When Judah sent the young goat by his friend the Adullamite, to receive the pledge from the woman's hand, he did not find her. He asked the people of her place, saying, Where is the temple prostitute who was by the road at a name? But they said, There has been no temple prostitute here. So he returned to Judah, and said, I did not find her, and furthermore, the people of the place said, There has been no temple prostitute here. Then Judah said, Let her keep them, otherwise we will become a laughingstock. After all, I sent this young goat, but you did not find her. Now it was about three months later that Judah was informed, Your daughter-in-law Tamar has prostituted herself, and behold, she is also pregnant by prostitution. Then Judah said, Bring her out and have her burned. It was while she was being brought out that she sent word to her father-in-law, saying, I am pregnant by the man to whom these things belong. She also said, Please examine and see, whose signet ring and cords and staff are these? And Judah recognized them, and said, She is more righteous than I, since I did not give her to my son Shelah. And he did not have relations with her again. It came about at the time she was giving birth, that behold, there were twins in her womb. Twenty-eight moreover, it took place while she was giving birth, that one baby put out a hand, and the midwife took and tied a scarlet thread on his hand, saying, This one came out first. But it came about as he drew back his hand that behold, his brother came out. Then she said, What a breach you have made for yourself. So he was named Perez. Afterward his brother came out who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and he was named Zira. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the bodyguard, bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. And the Lord was with Joseph, so he became a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and became his personal servant, and he made him overseer over his house, and put him in charge of all that he owned. It came about that from the time he made him overseer in his house and over all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house on account of Joseph, so the Lord's blessing was upon all that he owned, in the house and in the field. So he left Joseph in charge of everything that he owned, and with him there he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And it came about after these events that his master's wife had her eyes on Joseph, and she said, Sleep with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, with me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house, and he has put me in charge of all that he owns. There is no one greater in this house than I, and he has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil, and sin against God? Though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he did not listen to her to lie beside her or be with her. Now it happened one day that he went into the house to do his work, and none of the people of the household was there inside. So she grabbed him by his garment, 
saying, Sleep with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled, and went outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled outside, she called to the men of her household and said to them, See, he has brought in a Hebrew to us to make fun of us, he came in to me to sleep with me, and I screamed. When he heard that I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled and went outside. So she left his garment beside her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with these words, The Hebrew slave, whom you brought to us, came in to me to make fun of me. But when I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Now when his master heard the words of his wife which she spoke to him, saying, This is what your slave did to me, his anger burned. So Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him, and gave him favor in the sight of the warden of the prison. And the warden of the prison put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in the prison, so that whatever was done there, he was responsible for it. The warden of the prison did not supervise anything under Joseph's authority, because the Lord was with him, and, the Lord made whatever he did prosper. Then it came about after these things, that the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was furious with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. So he put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the bodyguard, in the prison, the same place where Joseph was imprisoned. And the captain of the bodyguard put Joseph in charge of them, and he took care of them, and they were in confinement for some time. Then the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, both had a dream the same night, each man with his own dream and each dream with its own interpretation. When Joseph came to them in the morning and saw them, behold, they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were with him in confinement in his master's house, why are your faces so sad today? And they said to him, We have had a dream, and there is no one to interpret it. Then Joseph said to them, Do interpretations not belong to God? Tell it to me, please. So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph, saying to him, In my dream, behold, there was a vine in front of me. And on the vine were three branches. And as it was budding, its blossoms came out, and its clusters produced ripe grapes. Now Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, so I took the grapes and squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Then Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it, the three branches are three days. Within three more days Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office and you will put Pharaoh's cup into his hand as in your former practice when you were his cupbearer. Only keep me in mind when it goes well for you, and please do me a kindness by mentioning me to Pharaoh, and get me out of this prison. For I was in fact kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing that they should have put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that he had interpreted favorably, he said to Joseph, I also saw in my dream, and behold, there were three baskets of white bread on my head. And in the top basket there were some of all kinds of baked food for Pharaoh, and the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. Then Joseph answered and said, This is its interpretation, the three baskets are three days. Within three more days Pharaoh will lift up your head from you and will hang you on a wooden post, and the birds will eat your flesh off you. So it came about on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he held a feast for all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants. 
He restored the chief cupbearer to his office, and he put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, just as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Now it happened at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream, and behold, he was standing by the Nile. And behold, from the Nile seven cows came up, fine-looking and fat, and they grazed in the marsh grass. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them from the Nile, ugly and thin, and they stood by the other cows on the bank of the Nile. Then the ugly and thin cows ate the seven fine-looking and fat cows. Then Pharaoh awoke. But he fell asleep and dreamed a second time, and behold, seven ears of grain came up on a single stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seven ears, thin and scorched by the east wind, sprouted up after them. And the thin ears swallowed the seven plump and full ears. Then Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Now in the morning his spirit was troubled, so he sent messengers and called for all the soothsayer priests of Egypt, and all its wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. Then the chief cupbearer spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I would make mention today of my own offenses. Pharaoh was furious with his servants, and he put me in confinement in the house of the captain of the bodyguard, both me and the chief baker. Then we had a dream one night, he and I, each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now a Hebrew youth was there with us, a servant of the captain of the bodyguard, and we told him the dreams, and he interpreted our dreams for us. For each man he interpreted according to his own dream. And just as he interpreted for us, so it happened, Pharaoh restored me in my office, but he hanged the chief baker. Then Pharaoh sent word and called for Joseph, and they hurriedly brought him out of the dungeon, and when he had shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came to Pharaoh. Fifteen Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, but no one can interpret it, and I have heard it said about you, that when you hear a dream you can interpret it. Joseph then answered Pharaoh, saying, It has nothing to do with me, God will give Pharaoh an answer for his own good. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, In my dream, there I was, standing on the bank of the Nile. And behold, seven cows, fat and fine-looking came up out of the Nile, and they grazed in the marsh grass. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and thin, such as I had never seen for ugliness in all the land of Egypt. And the thin and ugly cows ate the first seven fat cows. Yet when they had devoured them, it could not be detected that they had devoured them, for they were just as ugly as before. Then I awoke. I saw also in my dream, and behold, seven ears of grain, full and good, came up on a single stalk. And behold, seven ears, withered, thin, and scorched by the east wind sprouted up after them. And the thin ears swallowed the seven good ears. Then I told it to the soothsayer priests, but there was no one who could explain it to me. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same, God has told to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years, the dreams are one and the same. The seven thin and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years, and the seven thin ears scorched by the east wind will be seven years of famine. It is as I have spoken to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Behold, seven years of great abundance are coming in all the land of Egypt. And after them seven years of famine will come, and all the abundance will be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine will ravage the land. 
So the abundance will be unknown in the land because of that subsequent famine, for it will be very severe. Now as for the repeating of the dream to Pharaoh twice, it means that the matter is confirmed by God, and God will quickly bring it about. So now let Pharaoh look for a man discerning and wise, and appoint him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh take action to appoint overseers in charge of the land, and let him take a fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt as a tax in the seven years of abundance. Then have them collect all the food of these good years that are coming, and store up the grain for food in the cities under Pharaoh's authority, and have them guard it. Let the food be used as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine which will occur in the land of Egypt, so that the land will not perish during the famine. Now the proposal seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his servants. Then Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find a man like this, in whom there is a divine spirit? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has informed you of all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you are. You shall be in charge of my house, and all my people shall be obedient to you, only regarding the throne will I be greater than you. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, See, I have placed you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took off his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, and clothed him in garments of fine linen, and put the gold necklace around his neck. And he had him ride in his second chariot, and they proclaimed ahead of him, Bow the knee. And he placed him over all the land of Egypt. Moreover, Pharaoh said to Joseph, Though I am Pharaoh, yet without your permission no one shall raise his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh named Joseph zaphnath paneah and he gave him a Senath, the daughter of Potiphar priest of On, to be his wife. And Joseph went out over the land of Egypt. Now Joseph was thirty years old when he stood in the presence of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went through all the land of Egypt. During the seven years of plenty the land produced abundantly. So he collected all the food of these seven years which occurred in the land of Egypt and put the food in the cities, he put in every city the food from its own surrounding fields. Joseph stored up grain in great abundance like the sand of the sea, until he stopped measuring it, for it was beyond measure. Now before the year of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph named the firstborn Manasseh, for, he said, God has made me forget all my trouble and all of my father's household. And he named the second Ephraim, for, he said, God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. When the seven years of plenty which had taken place in the land of Egypt came to an end, fifty-four and the seven years of famine began to come, just as Joseph had said, then there was famine in all the lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt suffered famine, the people cried out to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph, whatever he says to you, you shall do. When the famine was spread over the entire face of the earth, then Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians, and the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Then the people of all the earth came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph, because the famine was severe in all the earth. Now Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, and Jacob said to his sons, Why are you staring at one another? Then he said, Look, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt, go down there and buy some for us from that place, so that we may live and not die. So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, I am afraid that harm may happen to him. 
So the sons of Israel came to buy grain among those who were coming, because the famine was also in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was the ruler over the land, he was the one who sold grain to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he disguised himself to them and spoke to them harshly. He said to them, Where have you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan, to buy food. But Joseph had recognized his brothers, although they did not recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he had about them, and he said to them, You are spies, you have come to look at the undefended parts of our land. And they said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man, we are honest men, your servants are not spies. Yet he said to them, No, but you have come to look at the undefended parts of our land. But they said, Your servants are twelve brothers in all, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan, and behold, the youngest is with our father today, and one is no longer alive. Yet Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you, you are spies. By this you will be tested, by the life of Pharaoh, you shall not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you and have him get your brother, while you remain confined, so that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you. But if not, by the life of Pharaoh, you are certainly spies. So he put them all together in prison for three days. Now Joseph said to them on the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined in your prison, but as for the rest of you, go, carry grain for the famine of your households. And bring your youngest brother to me, so that your words may be verified, and you will not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, Truly we are guilty concerning our brother, because we saw the distress of his soul when he pleaded with us, yet we would not listen, for that reason this distress has happened to us. Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not tell you, do not sin against the boy, and you would not listen? Now justice for his blood is required. They did not know, however, that Joseph understood, for there was an interpreter between them. Then he turned away from them and wept. But when he returned to them and spoke to them, he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain, but also to return every man's money in his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. And that is what was done for them. So they loaded their donkeys with their grain and departed from there. But when one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the overnight campsite, he saw his money, and behold, it was in the opening of his sack. So he said to his brothers, My money has been returned, and look, it is right in my sack. Then their hearts sank, and they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? When they came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan, they told him everything that had happened to them, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spoke harshly with us, and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father, one is no longer alive, and the youngest is with our father today in the land of Canaan. But the man, the lord of the land, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men, leave one of your brothers with me and take grain for the famine of your households, and go. But bring your youngest brother to me so that I may know that you are not spies, but honest men. I will give your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. Now it came about, as they were emptying their sacks, that behold, 
Every man's bag of money was in his sack, and when they and their father saw their bags of money, they were afraid. And their father Jacob said to them, You have deprived me of my sons, Joseph is gone, and Simeon is gone, and now you would take Benjamin, all these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, You may put my two sons to death if I do not bring him back to you, put him in my care, and I will return him to you. But Jacob said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he alone is left. If harm should happen to him on the journey you are taking, then you will bring my gray hair down to Sheol in sorrow. Now the famine was severe in the land. So it came about, when they had finished eating the grain which they had brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. Judah spoke to him, however, saying, The man sternly warned us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you do not send him, we will not go down, for the man said to us, You will not see my face unless your brother is with you. Then Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly, by telling the man whether you still had another brother? But they said, The man specifically asked about us and our relatives, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? So we answered his questions. Could we possibly know that he would say, Bring your brother down? So Judah said to his father Israel, Send the boy with me and we will arise and go, so that we may live and not die, we as well as you and our little ones. I myself will take responsibility for him. You may demand him back from me. If I do not bring him back to you and present him to you, then you can let me take the blame forever. For if we had not delayed, surely by now we could have returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this, take some of the best products of the land in your bags, and carry down to the man as a gift, a little balsam and a little honey, labdanum resin and myrrh, pistachio nuts and almonds and take double the money in your hand, and take back in your hand the money that was returned in the opening of your sacks, perhaps it was a mistake. Take your brother also, and arise, return to the man. And may God Almighty grant you compassion in the sight of the man, so that he will release to you your other brother and Benjamin. And as for me, if I am bereaved of my sons, I am bereaved. So the men took this gift, and they took double the money in their hand, and Benjamin, then they set out and went down to Egypt, and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to his house steward, Bring the men into the house, and slaughter an animal and make preparations, for the men are to dine with me at noon. 17 So the man did as Joseph said, and brought the men to Joseph's house. Now the men were afraid, because they were brought to Joseph's house, and they said, It is because of the money that was returned in our sacks the first time that we are being brought in, so that he may attack us and overpower us, and take us as slaves with our donkeys. So they approached Joseph's house steward, and spoke to him at the entrance of the house. And said, Oh, my lord, we indeed came down the first time to buy food. And it happened when we came to the campsite, that we opened our sacks, and behold, each man's money was in the opening of his sack, our money in full. So we have brought it back in our hand. We have also brought down other money in our hand to buy food, we do not know who put our money in our sacks. But he said, Peace be to you, do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks, your money was in my possession. Then he brought Simeon out to them. Then the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet, 
and he gave their donkeys feed. So they prepared the gift for Joseph's arrival at noon, for they had heard that they were to eat a meal there. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the gift which was in their hand, and they bowed down to the ground before him. Then he asked them about their welfare, and said, Is your old father well, of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? And they said, Your servant our father is well, he is still alive. Then they bowed down again in homage. And as he raised his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, he said, Is this your youngest brother, of whom you spoke to me? Then he said, May God be gracious to you, my son. Joseph then hurried out, for he was deeply stirred over his brother, and he looked for a place to weep, so he entered his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out, and he controlled himself and said, Serve the meal. Then they served him by himself, and Joseph's brothers by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. Now they were seated before him, from the firstborn according to his birthright to the youngest according to his youth, and the men looked at one another in astonishment. Then he took portions to them from his own table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. So they drank freely with him. Then he commanded his house steward, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the opening of his sack. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the opening of the sack of the youngest, and his money for the grain. And he did as Joseph had told him. As soon as it was light, the men were sent away, they with their donkeys. They had just left the city, and were not far away, when Joseph said to his house steward, Up, follow the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid evil for good? Is this not that from which my Lord drinks, and which he indeed uses for divination? You have done wrong in doing this. So he overtook them and spoke these words to them. And they said to him, Why does my Lord say such words as these? Far be it from your servants to do such a thing. Behold, the money which we found in the opening of our sacks we have brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? With whomever of your servants it is found, he shall die, and we also shall be my Lord's slaves. So he said, Now let it indeed be according to your words, he with whom it is found shall be my slave, but the rest of you shall be considered innocent. Then they hurried, each man lowered his sack to the ground, and each man opened his sack. And he searched, beginning with the oldest and ending with the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes in grief, and when each man had loaded his donkey, they returned to the city. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there, and they fell down to the ground before him. Joseph said to them, What is this thing that you have done? Do you not know that a man who is like me can indeed practice divination? So Judah said, What can we say to my Lord? What words can we speak? And how can we justify ourselves? God has found out the guilt of your servants, behold, we are my Lord's slaves, both we and the one in whose possession the cup has been found. But he said, Far be it from me to do this. The man in whose possession the cup has been found, he shall be my slave, but as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah approached him and said, O oh my Lord, may your servant please speak a word in my Lord's ears, and do not be angry with your servant, for you are equal to Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servants, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, 
We have an old father and a little boy born in our father's old age. Now his brother is dead, so he alone is left of his mother, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, Bring him down to me so that I may set my eyes on him. But we said to my Lord, The boy cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. You said to your servants, However, unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you will not see my face again. So it came about when we went up to your servant my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, Go back, buy us a little food. But we said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down, for we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant my father said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. And the one left me, and I said, Surely he is torn to pieces, and I have not seen him since. If you also take this one from me, and harm happens to him, you will bring my gray hair down to Sheol in sorrow. So now, when I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, since our father's life is so attached to the boy's life. When he sees that the boy is not with us, he will die. So your servants will bring the gray hair of your servant, our father, down to Sheol in sorrow. For your servant accepted responsibility for the boy from my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then my father can let me take the blame forever. So now, please let your servant remain as a slave to my lord instead of the boy, and let the boy go up with his brothers. For how shall I go up to my father if the boy is not with me? I fear that I may see the evil that would overtake my father. Then Joseph could not control himself in front of everyone standing before him, and he shouted, Have everyone leave me. So there was no one with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. Then he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard about it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were terrified in his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Please come closer to me. And they came closer. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold to Egypt. Now do not be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me ahead of you to save lives. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. So God sent me ahead of you to ensure for you a remnant on the earth, and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Now, therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his household, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father, and say to him, This is what your son Joseph says, God has made me lord of all Egypt, come down to me, do not delay. For you shall live in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your grandchildren, and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There I will also provide for you, for there are still five years of famine to come, and you and your household and all that you have would be impoverished. Behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth which is speaking to you. Now you must tell my father of all my splendor in Egypt, and all that you have seen, and you must hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept on them, and afterward his brothers talked with him. Now when the news was heard in Pharaoh's house that Joseph's brothers had come, it pleased Pharaoh and his servants. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this, 
load your livestock and go to the land of Canaan. And take your father and your households and come to me, and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are ordered, do this, take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. And do not concern yourselves with your property, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. Then the sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the journey. To each of them he gave changes of garments, but to Benjamin he gave three hundred pieces of silver and five changes of garments. And to his father he sent the following, ten male donkeys loaded with the best things of Egypt, ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and sustenance for his father on the journey. So he sent his brothers away, and as they departed, he said to them, Do not quarrel on the journey. Then they went up from Egypt, and came to the land of Canaan, to their father Jacob. And they told him, saying, Joseph is still alive, and indeed he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. But he was stunned, for he did not believe them. When they told him all the words of Joseph that he had spoken to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, then the spirit of their father Jacob revived. Then Israel said, It is enough, my son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. So Israel set out with all that he had, and came to Beersheba, and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father, do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also assuredly bring you up again, and Joseph will close your eyes. Then Jacob left Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob and their little ones and their wives in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. They also took their livestock and their possessions, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and came to Egypt, Jacob and all his descendants with him. His sons and his grandsons with him, his daughters and his granddaughters, and all his descendants he brought with him to Egypt. Now these are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt, Jacob and his sons, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn. And the sons of Reuben, Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. And the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shal the son of a Canaanite woman. And the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. And the sons of Judah, Er, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah, but Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamel. And the sons of Issachar, Tola, Pava, Ayab, and Shimron. And the sons of Zebulun, Seard, Elon, and Yaliel. These are the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob in Paddan Aram, with his daughter Dinah, all his sons and his daughters numbered thirty-three. And the sons of Gad, Ziphian, Hagi, Shuni, Esben, Eri, Barodi, and Areli. And the sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, Bariah, and their sister Sarah. And the sons of Bariah, Heber and Malkiel. These are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to his daughter Leah, and she bore to Jacob these sixteen persons. The sons of Jacob's wife Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin. Now to Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore to him. And the sons of Benjamin, Bela, Becher, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ahai, Rosh, Muppim, 
Huppim, and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel, who were born to Jacob, there were fourteen persons in all. And the sons of Dan, Hushim. And the sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shilam. These are the sons of Bilhah, whom Laban gave to his daughter Rachel, and she bore these to Jacob, there were seven persons in all. All the people belonging to Jacob, who came to Egypt, his direct descendants, not including the wives of Jacob's sons, were sixty-six persons in all. And the sons of Joseph, who were born to him in Egypt, were two, all the people of the house of Jacob, who came to Egypt, were seventy. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph, to guide him to Goshen, and they came into the land of Goshen. And Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. As soon as he appeared to him, Joseph threw himself on his neck and wept on his neck a long time. Then Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face, that you are still alive. But Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh, and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household, who were in the land of Canaan, have come to me. And the men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of livestock, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls for you and says, What is your occupation? You shall say, your servants have been keepers of livestock since our youth even until now, both we and our fathers, so that you may live in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. Then Joseph went in and told Pharaoh, and said, My father and my brothers and their flocks and their herds and all that they have, have come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? So they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and our fathers. They also said to Pharaoh, We have come to reside in the land, for there is no pasture for your servants' flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now, therefore, Please let your servants live in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is at your disposal. Settle your father and your brothers in the best of the land, let them live in the land of Goshen, and if you know any capable men among them, then put them in charge of my livestock. Then Joseph brought his father Jacob and presented him to Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many years have you lived? So Jacob said to Pharaoh, The years of my living abroad are one hundred and thirty, few and unpleasant have been the years of my life, nor have they attained the years that my fathers lived during the days of their living abroad. So Jacob blessed Pharaoh, and went out from his presence. Now Joseph settled his father and his brothers and gave them property in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had ordered. Joseph also provided his father and his brothers and all his father's household with food, according to the number of their little ones. Now there was no food in all the land, because the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished because of the famine. And Joseph collected all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan in payment for the grain which they bought, and Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. When the money was all spent in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph saying, Give us food, for why should we die in your presence? For our money is gone. Then Joseph said, Give up your livestock, and I will give you food for your livestock, since your money is gone. 17 So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and Joseph gave them food in exchange for the horses and the flocks and the herds and the donkeys, 
and he fed them with food in exchange for all their livestock that year. But when that year ended, they came to him the next year and said to him, We will not hide from my lord the fact that our money is all spent, and the livestock are my lord's. There is nothing left for my lord except our bodies and our lands. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for food, and we and our land will be slaves to Pharaoh. So give us seed, so that we may live and not die, and that the land may not be desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for every Egyptian sold his field, because the famine was severe upon them. So the land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he relocated them to the cities from one end of Egypt's border to the other. Only the land of the priests he did not buy, because the priests had an allotment from Pharaoh, and they lived off the allotment which Pharaoh gave them. Therefore, they did not sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Behold, today I have purchased you and your land for Pharaoh, now, here is seed for you, and you may sow the land. At the harvest you shall give a fifth to Pharaoh, and four fifths shall be your own for seed of the field and for your food, and for those of your households and as food for your little ones. So they said, You have saved our lives. Let us find favor in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's slaves. Joseph made it a statute concerning the land of Egypt, valid to this day, that Pharaoh was to have the fifth, only the land of the priests did not become Pharaoh's. Now Israel lived in the land of Egypt, in Goshen, and they acquired property in it and were fruitful and became very numerous. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt for seventeen years, so the length of Jacob's life was one hundred and forty-seven years. When the time for Israel to die drew near, he called his son Joseph and said to him, Please, if I have found favor in your sight, place your hand under my thigh now and deal with me in kindness and faithfulness, please do not bury me in Egypt. But when I lie down with my fathers, you shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. And he said, I will do as you have said. And he said, Swear to me. So he swore to him. Then Israel bowed in worship at the head of the bed. Now it came about after these things that Joseph was told, Behold, your father is sick. So he took his two sons Manasseh and Ephraim with him. When it was told to Jacob, Behold, your son Joseph has come to you, Israel collected his strength and sat up in the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. And he said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and numerous, and I will make you a multitude of peoples, and will give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. Now your two sons, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine, Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine, as Reuben and Simeon are. But your children that you have fathered after them shall be yours, they shall be called by the names of their brothers in their inheritance. Now as for me, when I came from Pad Dan, Rachel died, to my sorrow, in the land of Canaan on the journey, when there was still some distance to go to Ephrath. I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. Dot. When Israel saw Joseph's sons, he said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, They are my sons, whom God has given me here. So he said, Bring them to me, please, so that I may bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were so dim from age that he could not see. And Joseph brought them close to him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see your face, and behold, God has let me see your children as well. 
Then Joseph took them from his knees, and bowed with his face to the ground. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand toward Israel's left, and Manasseh with his left hand toward Israel's right, and brought them close to him. But Israel reached out his right hand and placed it on the head of Ephraim, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, crossing his hands, although Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph, and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day. The angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the boys, and may my name live on in them, and the names of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and may they grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. When Joseph saw that his father placed his right hand on Ephraim's head, it displeased him, and he grasped his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Place your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know, he also will become a people and he also will be great. However, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you Israel will pronounce blessing, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. And so he put Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am about to die, but God will be with you, and bring you back to the land of your fathers. And I give you one portion more than your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. Then Jacob summoned his sons and said, Assemble yourselves, so that I may tell you what will happen to you in the days to come. Gather together and listen, sons of Jacob, yes, listen to Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power. Uncontrollable as water, you shall not have preeminence, because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it, he went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brothers, their swords are implements of violence. May my soul not enter into their counsel, may my glory not be united with their assembly, for in their anger they killed men, and in their self-will they lamb at oxen. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob, and disperse them among Israel. As for you, Judah, your brothers shall praise you, your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies, your father's sons shall bow down to you. Judah is a lion's cub, from the prey, my son, you have gone up. He crouches, he lies down as a lion, and as a lion, who dares to stir him up. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. He ties his foal to the vine, and his donkey's colt to the choice vine, he washes his garments in wine, and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are dull from wine, and his teeth white from milk. Zebulun will reside at the seashore, and he shall be a harbor for ships, and his flank shall be toward Sidon. Issachar is a strong donkey, lying down between the sheepfolds. When he saw that a resting place was good and that the land was pleasant, he bowed his shoulder to carry burdens, and became a slave at forced labor. Dan shall judge his people, as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent in the way, a horned viper in the path, that bites the horse's heels, so that its rider falls backward. For your salvation I wait, Lord. As for Gad, a band of raiders shall attack him, but he will attack at their heels. As for Asher, his food shall be rich, and he will yield royal delicacies. 
Naphtali is a doe let loose, he utters beautiful words. Joseph is a fruitful branch, a fruitful branch by a spring, its branches hang over a wall. The archers provoked him, and shot at him and were hostile toward him. But his bow remained firm, and his arms were agile, from the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. From the God of your Father who helps you, and by the Almighty who blesses you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breasts and of the womb. The blessings of your Father have surpassed the blessings of my ancestors up to the furthest boundary of the everlasting hills, may they be on the head of Joseph, and on the top of the head of the one distinguished among his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf, in the morning he devours the prey, and in the evening he divides the spoils. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them. He blessed them, every one with the blessing appropriate to him. Then he commanded them and said to them, I am about to be gathered to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite. In the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is opposite Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought along with the field from Ephron the Hittite as a burial site. There they buried Abraham and his wife Sarah, there they buried Isaac and his wife Rebekah, and there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is in it, purchased from the sons of hate. When Jacob finished commanding his sons, he drew his feet into the bed and breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. Then Joseph fell on his father's face, and wept over him and kissed him. Joseph commanded his servants the physicians to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Now forty days were required for it, for such is the period required for embalming. And the Egyptians wept for him seventy days. When the days of mourning for him were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your sight, please speak to Pharaoh saying. My father made me swear, saying, Behold, I am about to die, in my grave which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan, there you shall bury me. Now then, please let me go up and bury my father, then I will return. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear. So Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his household and all the elders of the land of Egypt. And all the household of Joseph and his brothers in his father's household, they left only their little ones and their flocks and their herds in the land of Goshen. Chariots with teams of horses also went up with him, and it was a very great company. When they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, they mourned there with a very great and sorrowful lamentation, and he observed seven days of mourning for his father. Now when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning for the Egyptians. Therefore it was named Abel Mizraim, which is beyond the Jordan. And so his sons did for him as he had commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah opposite Mamre, which Abraham had bought along with the field as a burial site from Ephron the Hittite. And after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers, and all who had gone up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers had seen that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong which we did to him? So they sent instructions to Joseph, saying, Your father commanded us before he died, saying, This is what you shall say to Joseph, Please forgive, I beg you, the offense of your brothers and their sin, for they did you wrong. And now, 
Please forgive the offense of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in God's place? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, to keep many people alive. So therefore, do not be afraid, I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Now Joseph stayed in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw the third generation of Ephraim's sons, also the sons of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were born on Joseph's knees. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will assuredly take care of you and bring you up from this land to the land which he promised on oath to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear, saying, God will assuredly take care of you, and you shall carry my bones up from here. So Joseph died at the age of 110 years, and they embalmed him and placed him in a coffin in Egypt.